Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and in this sort of mini series for our citizen members I'm going to show you how to create this little hippo character on screen by going through the base mesh creation, the sculpting process, the retopology process, and finally how to UV and bake out the normal maps for our little character here. And one of the really cool things that I'm going to be doing in this series that I think you'll really enjoy is how to use the B Surfaces add-on, which was recently released under GPL, so it's free to all, and is actually now bundled with the development version of Blender and will be included in 2.64, but how to use the B Surfaces add-on for doing some very quick, very intuitive uh, retopology modeling that otherwise you really couldn't do with the existing tools. So I think you'll really enjoy that aspect of it, and I hope that you enjoy the series as a whole. And thanks again for your citizen support. As always, it is greatly appreciated. It's largely what keeps this site running. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started. So to get started on our little hippo character here, we're going to begin by modeling the base mesh. And the base mesh is going to serve not only as the starting point for the general form of our animal, but also as the starting point for all of the sculpting detail. And once we have all of that sculpting detail in as well on the base mesh, we can then go in and retopologize that sculpt to get a much more optimized mesh that then we could texture paint, uh, we could pose or animate or rig or anything that we wanted to do with it, along with even sculpting some additional high frequency details onto. Uh, but first we need the base mesh. So the, we're gonna start, uh, you can see I've already got the front view set up and the side view for our basic modeling sheets, along with then a generic uh, angle of the character here in my image editor, just so I can get a general feel for the complete character. And this is going to be a pretty quick and simple model, actually. We're going to start by just hitting Shift A and adding in a cube. And then on this cube, we're going to immediately go over to the modifier panel. We're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier, and I'm going to increase the levels to two. The reason that I'm doing this is I'm then going to actually use this to very quickly model the generic shape of the character, namely the body of the character, before I go in and actually start extruding legs or arm, or, well, not arms in this case, uh, but legs of the character, and before even adding in a mirror modifier. And the reason for this is it's very easy by using a subsurf modifier modifier to get this basic rounded shape from nothing more than a cube. So when in edit mode then, I can just move this up and I'm just going to roughly start positioning the character here. And I want to be sure that I get both sides. I'm going to scale this up, maybe go about here. And then I'm going to hit E and extrude and then I'll scale this down. And one of the things that I want to pay attention to is to make sure that I keep very evenly distributed polys in here. Because since this is, this is going to be a sculpting base mesh, I want to be sure that the majority of the faces are all roughly square. And the reason for that is when you're sculpting, you know, you want to be able to put in equal detail for the most part, wherever you, wherever you need it. And by having all of our faces square, or at least roughly square, then this will ensure that we're able to get, you know, the same amount of detail in nearly all of the areas that we want without getting some weird stretching or dis, um, distortion and such. So here you can see the very basic initial shape. It's just a matter of extruding individual sections. Uh, well, kind of individual sections. I really only extruded once or twice. And then I'm just going to go into front view here and just scale these down to continue, you know, working towards the correct shape. And the reason that I'm not using a mirror modifier at this point is because by having it just a single mesh, I can just scale around the, um, the X axis really easily. Whereas if I had a mirror modifier on here, then I would have to, uh, scale away from the cursor or else just use my move tool. And if you look at our mesh now, you can see that everything is fairly evenly distributed. It's maybe a little tighter up here, but that's okay. You know, it's okay to have a little bit of variation and such. Uh, that will just give us more control in those areas. And in the areas like the head, you know, that's not a bad thing at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and apply my subsurf modifier. And this way, this mesh is actually real. And this then gives me a very good point uh, or a very good resolution to then begin working with the the legs and such but before i do that i want to go ahead and delete half my mesh so i'll hit z to go to wireframe mode i'll just select the left half i'm going to hit x delete those vertices and then we'll add in our normal mirror modifier such that i have a symmetrical mesh 
I'll go and enable clipping so that I can't pull these vertices away from the center line. And I'm going to also modify my background images just a little bit. You'll notice that I'm using the new show on foreground option, which is fairly new. I believe it came out in uh, 263. But because of that, sometimes it's a little bit harder to see my mesh. And so I'm just going to take the opacity on both my references down to 0.3. I don't really care about the details on the references right now. I really only want to see the overall shape. And so, you know, I really don't need those references to be too prominent. So what I'm going to do now, before I actually extrude the legs, I'm going to go in and turn on my proportional editing tool just by pressing O or enabling it down here. And I'm now then just going to grab individual sections bit by bit using a fairly high fall off and just start shaping them to the uh, to the reference. And this will just give me a slightly more accurate shape. You know, I'm not I'm obviously not getting an exact shape. There's simply not enough geometry to get that, but I can get it much closer than just working with the subsurfed cube was able to get me. So there we go, just a little tweaking here and there will get me quite a bit closer. I can bring these down here. Maybe I'll skip or might rotate these around the z-axis, just get a little bit more curve. This where I'm following this kind of um, fat roll and such, which will, even though it doesn't seem like much at this point, particularly since we're doing a base mesh, it will actually help us define the character or the um, the model a little bit more with the details, even with the sculpting, by letting the topology form and follow the, you know, the um, primary shapes in the both the muscle flows and the um, the fat flows. It'll give us a much easier time when actually sculpting the model, because you'll find a lot of the details with just a little bit of subtle sculpting here and there will just kind of start to help form themselves almost. Uh, you know, obviously it's still up to you to actually create the exact look, but by having clean topology, you'll find it's probably a little bit easier to create. All right, and just a little bit more tweaking here and there, and I think we'll be about ready to go in and start um, extruding the, the legs and such. Just kind of matching this up from all angles. You can see that my uh, the body is not nearly wide enough at the moment, so I will go ahead and widen it up a bit. Okay, I think that feels pretty good. So I'm going to save my file. And then what I will do on the legs and such, basically what we want to do is we're going to grab six vertices around each leg, such here and here. And then we're basically going to make those into a more circular form and then just extrude them straight down. So let's just grab a single vertex at a time. We'll move this out, move this in, move this in, move this out. Do the same thing here and here. And then we'll go towards the back, do the exact same thing. Scale these in, scale these out, scale these in a bit. Smooth things out as needed. I'll move these out further to match up with the edge of the leg there. Bring this out, bring these down. Okay, and that will just about do it. So now I can actually go into face mode. I'm just gonna select these two faces and these two faces. Now I'm just gonna hit E to extrude. And then before I move them, I'm gonna go and just hit Z to remove the constraint along the, the normal and then Z again to lock it to the Z axis. So I can just move them straight down and then I'll left click, and then I'm going to hit S, Z, and 0 to just scale them down to make them perfectly flat to then form the feet. I can then go ahead and bring them in just a little bit. And then maybe on this side, you know, I will go in, I'll pull these forward, I'll pull these ones back. I'm going to add in two edge loops to each one and scale each of them down just to kind of, you know, round out the legs just a little bit. And then I'm going to... Uh, let's see, that actually may be just enough. Actually, well, no, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add in one more loop right at the bottom of the feet and then select both of them by just Alt right clicking and Alt Shift right clicking to select each of the edge loops. And I'm just going to hit Alt S to scale them along the normals just a little bit. And that will just expand them. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a little bit more geometry right down here to make sure I have enough to actually, um, put in the, the toenails and things like that for his feet. 
And I think that will just about do it. Um, oh, no, we're going to do one more thing. Uh, and we're going to, we're not going to do the tail. The tail can be handled with sculpting, but we're going to add in uh, the basic ear. So for the basic ear, I just want to push and pull this geometry just a little bit. Kind of tweak these, try and get a, the hint of a circle around the ear. And then we'll check on the front side and that looks good. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this area here and I'm going to hit control F to bring up my face menu and use inset faces. And then hitting F6, I can bring up my inset or my, my operator panel for the last used tool. And I'm just going to increase the thickness like that. Okay, so now with the inset, then I can simply select the inside of it. And I'm going to maybe hit Alt S just to push it out just a little bit. And then maybe I will rotate it ever so slightly. Maybe pull this side over just a little, just to, you know, kind of reshape where the ear will be. Since I kind of want this this direction of, of sorts, uh, it doesn't need to be exact. You know, we'll have quite a bit of freedom in the sculpt tools to kind of play with that and reposition it at will. But I want to get it fairly close at least. Okay, that'll probably be close enough. You know, any any more we can tweak it in the sculpt tools. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more, and then I'm going to extrude out. I'll scale down, bring it up, and then extrude out again. Scale down. And let's go ahead and rotate these just a little. Bring them back. Rotate these a little. Bring it back again. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale this up. Actually, just a little bit more like that. I will edge slide to bring them up. And then I'm going to do one thing with this. Uh, just to get a little bit more detail in here and a little bit more topology to then get the detail that I want in the actual sculpt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this front face or these, this front area and I'm going to inset it by just hitting control F inset. And then I'll bring up F6 again to adjust the thickness to something like that. And then I'll select this inside. And I'm just going to then hit Alt S and bring it in. So it doesn't need to be a lot. You know, we'll really do most of this detailing with the sculpt tools. But this way, you know, I really want to get some some good detail in here, you know, with the ear flat fold coming down, some extra thickness right in here, just really get some some good detail in the ear. And so having that little bit of extra geometry will really help with that when it comes to the uh, sculpting. So just want to be sure that we have the geometry where we need. And I think that will probably work for the base mesh. Um, we might do one more thing, actually. And I'm just going to add in just a little bit more geometry to the eye area to, again, make sure that we have enough. You know, one of the reasons that sometimes we will add in some kind of region-specific geometry on a base mesh is so that we don't have to raise the multi-res level as high as we might otherwise have to uh, just to get detail in a specific area. You know, sometimes having some extra localized geometry can be really good so that you don't have to raise it as much uh, and then just waste space in the other areas and such. So here we go. Just adding in basically a loop using the inset tool makes that really easy to just quickly add in a little extra geometry here. And then I'm just, you know, pushing it down and whatnot just to fit roughly the shape of the eye. Again, that's just going to help my overall topology and flow, even though with sculpting, uh, and just help me kind of naturally form those areas by just, you know, creasing and sculpting those areas with, with relative ease, actually. And that'll make a little bit more sense as I get a little further along. And again, it's not necessary. I just think that having some of that um, shape already in there can give you a little bit a little bit of a boost when you get to that point in the sculpting. So I think that will just about do it. Uh, let's just give this kind of a once over. You know, we don't need any extra geometry here. Uh, that will be, you know, we'll have plenty in there for these major details and such. You know, we really don't need to subdivide things a whole lot. So I think that will do it for the base mesh. So the next, oh, actually, wait, almost. Just going to clean that up just a little bit more to actually fit the shape of the actual legs 
based on our reference. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit more accurate. So I will now save this and we're ready to begin sculpting.